Today we're talking about a couple of explosions. We're talking about a rocket reaching orbit, the other one exploding while attempting to land. We're talking about Russia, China, the future implication that these two facts have on the space balance, on politics, and how one was quite of a clear failure and the other one was celebrated as a success. So let's start. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about Russia. The recent Soyuz mission uh, that was attempted and uh, well, the flight part, the rocket part, let's say, was successful. It occurred on November 27, 2025. Uh, with on board two uh, cosmonauts, so Russian astronauts and an American astronaut, Don Pettit, Donald Pettit, astronaut from NASA. And uh, let's say the rocket part, so uh, the part involving the rocket, the flight, and the re reaching the International Space Station was actually a success. What happened, what occurred for the crew of the mission MS 28? Uh, was the problem that involved the structure the structure on the ground indeed uh, you may have heard and you may have read our article on the spaceinfo.club uh, of some days ago where we talked about this structural failure of the ground support structure which basically uh, well failed in supporting and sustaining the forces and the thermal stress the structural stress that this uh, structure had bare due to uh, the launches, the high number of launches in time. Indeed, uh, well, the first thing that uh, come to mind is the Russian approach, well, the Roscosmos approach on um, the philosophy of flying rockets, which are indeed still are really very reliable. Uh, indeed, uh, I think there has there have been like uh, only two Soyuz failure in the entire Soyuz rocket and capsule history and we're talking about like a 60 year long history so it's super reliable and also in this case the rocket and the capsule demonstrated to still be reliable uh, the failure didn't didn't uh, involve the capsule or the rocket which performed successfully as usual i would say because uh, well it's still uh, uh, i would say well one of the best machines to transport people and cargo from the ground to space in particular to the international space station this uh, reliability is not under discussion what occurred is uh, the failure of the structure which well poses lights uh, on an aspect uh, of the Russian uh, space agency uh, and a general approach of high reliability on one side, but uh, it, which is dictated of, let's say, high conservatorism and, uh, well, uh, less being prone to innovation or even uh, unconditional maintenance or changing little things in the approach that may let's say pose discussion to i wouldn't say tradition but something which has always been done in some way and uh, has to be done still yet in that very same way so uh, this is even though this is let, let's say a matter of maintenance so you have to preserve your structure your vehicles and uh, well all those things so the rocket, the capsule is rebuilt from 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 zero, basically. So every flying capsule flies only uh, uh, after flying uh, is not reused for the next flight. So uh, the process of building and uh, the pro yeah the process of building the, the rocket and the capsule is very well tested. So uh, the point is that. Uh, uh, this isn't under discussion, so the Russians are very good in uh, well supplying reliability to what they build. But uh, here the problem is uh, the gantry, uh, American would say, so uh, the, 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 the launch pad, which for sure is not rebuilt uh, every time a launch occurs. It's the, the very same uh, for every launch, and the very same, I don't mean only the design, but physically the same structure. So. 
uh, and this is uh, behind the failure of the structure itself, uh, don't, not really the metallic structure that you see during those launch videos, but uh, uh, the uh, concrete and uh, metal, iron and uh, steel structure behind that gantry that you are used to see in the video. That basically collapsed uh, very few seconds after the rocket cleared the uh, the launch pad. So uh, no consequences for the astronauts and things like that, but again, consequences for things on the ground. So a uh, couple of consequences I would mention are the time-wise consequence and uh, uh, the political consequence. And let, let's see uh, a little later what I'm talking about. So just to give you an idea of the other topic we're going to talk about today, uh, I'm talking about uh, land space. Private Chinese company, well, private and Chinese company. Yeah, that's strange to, to hear, uh, particularly in the space field, but that's what occurred. And the whole rocket launch was, uh, well, 95% was a success. It was, let's say, sold to the public as a general success because, uh, uh, well, they say they gathered very super useful data from telemetry, from the launch, and things like that. And, well, I believe it. It's, uh, well, trustworthy, it's very plausible, and uh, yeah, uh, it it's, can be true, and indeed uh, uh, every company would, would, would do it this, and that, that's it. But uh, the launch ended in, like, a fireball, and, uh, well, uh, from what we know, uh, this is not because it's China, because every company, even Blue Origin, SpaceX, and all those kind of company don't re release their uh, secret uh, company confidential data. And I'm talking about the telemetry, the data, the, the, deep, the deep data uh, from uh, the booster, the engines and things like that. So uh, that's not because it's China, that's because it's a company and that's what they do. It's, it's pretty normal. So. Uh, it seems from what we know that uh, the problem was the relighting of uh, the engines uh, for the landing of the rocket. That's not an easy thing. Think about SpaceX and Starship, for example. You see some, let's say, raw, simple telemetry from uh, SpaceX launches. Uh, you can see it. And not all those like 33 engines below the he super heavy booster relight successfully at every launch, sp uh, specifically at the beginning. So that's a common problem. And uh, well, everything else seems to have worked perfectly. But we're going to talk about this uh, in a few seconds. In couple of minutes. Back to Russia. Well, uh, that's a matter of a single point of failure. What do I mean? Well, uh, you have uh, specifically in space, uh, in flying things, you have uh, a repetition, a redundancy of uh, systems. So if you have uh, an en one engine, probably if you are going to fly, specifically humans, you maybe you double it, you, you have three of them, four, five, six, and so on. And the very same things happens for control surfaces, uh, uh, structures, even this is uh, less, uh, well, explicit while looking at things, but even structures are redundant. And uh, you have redundant uh, avionics, and all everything is redundant. What do I mean? Well, if you have a failure, and you usually well, you may have, it's not so uncommon, a space shuttle has had like five times the redundancy. So every system was redundant, well, duplicated five times. So one failure doesn't have to compromise the whole mission. And uh, this is actually what's being done also on, on the Soyuz rocket and capsule. Well, this, I believe it, uh, Russia declared it and all the astronauts declare it, it's, it's well, it's, it's the truth, but uh, here the single point of failure is the launch pad. If you lose the launch pad as a structure, as a, co as a launch complex, well, uh, you, don't, you don't have the possibility to launch rocket into space anymore. Uh, well, a couple of, of other launch locations, particularly the one in um, Siberia, well, uh, was mentioned. Uh, the other one is used for only for military uses, uh, so it's not certified, it's not available for human launches. Uh, so the, the, the Siberian location is not yet certified for launching rockets which are transporting humans into space. So 
the single point of failure here has huge consequences. It doesn't imply the deaths of people, but has a political, economical, uh, well, country level um, consequences. The Russia is no more capable of launching humans into space because they don't have the ground support structure allowing their rocket to fly into space and be launched. Well, this is a problem. And in a matter of time, well, uh, it has uh, implication in terms of months, maybe even one year or something like around that, one and a half year. So it's not a matter of days. It's a huge timely implication for a country which is under huge pressure under well different upfronts the military one the political one the economical one so well this is not an easy thing uh, they are they were uh, yeah still launching uh, humans also for other countries indeed on uh, uh, this mission uh, donald pettit who is a nasa astronaut was on board that rocket so uh, it has also uh, com well consequences on a global level, not on a country level. So this is a thing. So uh, also the Progress 33 mission, which is a cargo mission, has been compromised because no Soyuz rocket uh, can access space now. So uh, all the food supply, food delivery, the supporting uh, um, the supporting supplies uh, to the International Space Station cannot be. Uh, delivered anymore by Russia. So this is a problem. Also, something uh, that uh, some people are less used to think about uh, is the fact that the International Space Station has doesn't have uh, such a, a stable orbit as you may think. Well, it's not going to fall back into Earth in a matter of weeks, for sure. But uh, also the orbital mechanics, the, the flight of the station has to be maintained in, a sort of, in, in some sense. So what do I mean? You have to uh, change, to, to give periodic uh, burns uh, to, uh, with, with the thrusters uh, which are on board the International Space Station to maintain that orbit, uh, preventing it to slightly decay uh, in a matter of a few meters and then uh, uh, well, higher amounts of, uh, uh, of, of, of orbital radius. So uh, the International Space Station doesn't has doesn't have its own thrusters. So the thrusters that are used are the ones of the capsules attached to it. In this case, there were they are the uh, thrusters of the Soyuz, which is the one that is uh, docked now from the the latest missions. But uh, there won't be any uh, any Soyuz. Uh, for some months, so this is also a problem. So for sure, uh, this is something that, as you as you as you see, has multiple consequences on multiple sides. We are going to see the impact and also how Russia is trying to solve if they have, because they have a lot of priority, as you know for sure, how they are going to solve this problem, uh, which is a uh, high priority, high, highly demanding, and well, we can only see it. But that's the problem. Now on the other side. Uh, well, I anticipated that there is an explosion, and there has been an explosion, but, uh, well, it occurred in the final part of the flight of uh, a Chinese private company rocket, which successfully performed, as said, well, something like 95% of its mission. I'm talking about the Zuka 3 reusable rocket, which land, well, almost landed back on Earth after reaching orbit. Well, uh, as I say, we still don't have that much data, orbital parameters, velocity speeds, uh, uh, all those things, and particularly telemetry from the rocket itself uh, after the launch. Uh, but, well, uh, they communicated, uh, this can be a communication strategy for sure, but they said it's been a huge, well, a success for the private company. So it was the very first mission, the very first attempt to launch a rocket into space and as a space, I would say almost orbit and land back it on the ground with what was said by the company, but also by analysts looking at the launch and the landing, uh, the precision with which the rocket landed back on the ground is astonishing. Well, uh, it demonstrated to have a high control on the flight and also on the land back of something which is, I would say, uh, something like a 10-story huge can, flying can, 
which is trying to land back after reaching uh, huge velocities and well moving through the uh, outside of the something like outside the atmosphere and then back into the atmosphere so uh, what they use physically to uh, maneuver the rocket are fins strikes strikes things like that so uh, surfaces which exploit the atmospheric forces and then as happens and as we analyze in different videos uh, I hope that uh, you enjoyed uh, and it seems so that you enjoyed the technical analysis of the new Glenn second launch well uh, you find here the the video uh, let me know in the comment what you think about this and wait subscribe to the channel it's free for you but it's uh, well of huge help to us uh, to keep on going with this project so thanks and uh, well I was saying that uh, uh, as, as we have seen uh, the final part of the landing maneuver was exploited uh, with uh, what well, was attempted to be exploited through the engines which is the only thing that you can use for sure rocket don't, doesn't have the rocket doesn't has doesn't have a parachute so the only thing that you can use when the velocity is so small you still don't have a aerodynamic uh, authority so you don't, you only can use the engines, the thrust. So uh, they attempted to relight those thrusters, but something in the combustion, well, failed, and well, the rocket crashed in a fireball on the ground. So as I say, they celebrated it as a success. We'll see what they are capable of doing in the next launches, because it seems that there are scheduled next launches, but for sure, if we think of uh, Blue Origin was uh, capable of doing and SpaceX, which is uh, still the most insight, uh, the most observed companies, private space company in the world was capable of doing at the beginning of uh, their attempt. Well, this is surprising how this Chinese private space company has been capable of doing. So, well, let's see what the future uh, is here and well, See you in the next video. Thanks.